Good afternoon and welcome back to another episode of A Contagious Smile, where every smile tells a story. We have Alex with us today. He, I, I'm so excited to have Alex here because when I was learning about Alex, which I've known about him for a while, we have a lot of things in common. He is an entrepreneur. He has done it all. He's had his own businesses. He was on the road to Forbes 30 under 30, my dream, but I'm way over 30 now, so that doesn't matter anymore. Um, he started his first, don't judge me for my age. Um, my first, he started his first business with golf balls and I grew up on a golf course. So that's awesome. And, uh, he was selling used golf balls. Is, is that right, Alex? Oh yeah, that's it. Yep. <laughs> that's <I was>. awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. So I knew right off the bat, he's going to be amazing. Not to mention, um, as you'll learn later on through the podcast, Alex has been so influential in me doing what I do podcasting wise, as well as so many others. And for that, I want to thank you because you really are our like podcast guru. So thank you so much for what you do and who you are. Victoria, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, you said too many nice things about me, I have to say first off, but thank you. I'm, I'm honored <laughs> to be know. here. And, uh, you know, I, I, we said it offline, like we're both just here to help and serve people. And uh, so it's it's an honor. I'm excited to hear more about how we're similar as we kind of navigate through our conversation today, but uh, really looking forward to it. So thank you again. Absolutely. So when you were just 10, you started selling golf balls and became like this entrepreneur golf ball guy around the neighborhood and you sold used golf balls and people actually bought them from you. And I think that's amazing. I grew up on the golf course with my grandfather. It was just amazing quality time. I love that. Now, when you were a teen, you actually launched, I think this is fascinating. You launched your own tech company that created like a virtual way for people to go on and see homes for sale. Correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's like my secret addiction. Like I like to go around and look at, you know, what's going to be my forever home and look at them virtually. That is like so you jump cool. on Zillow and you go look at it and you have a certain area and you don't even look at things under a million dollars because why would you waste your time? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I think we all maybe don't want to admit, but all of us just want to see what else is in our city. And sometimes like I'm, I'm like where I'm at, there's not like I'm not like in a big city. So it's not like there's million like 10 20 million dollar like penthouses and stuff like right. that but i'm always like is there anything here that's over five million dollars if so i want to see what it looks like so i totally understand that <laughs> yes and then you started investing in real estate mm -hmm. for a short period of time and then of course they had the recession of 2007 through 2009 you lost some money in that and then you went on with the help of your dad Correct. And Correct. Yeah. getting into the aerospace company kind of thing. And hey, you get in where you get in. And I know you were doing all sorts of grunt stuff. Um, and then you ended up taking it as a passion, which is amazing because like that's one of the things we had in common. I started very young. Um, and then I was in the corporate world before I was in my twenties and I was an executive. And so I, I get it. It was like that burning passion just to to do it. So it was between the business corporate side and the aerospace side that you sort up to a senior exec. Correct. Right? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, you fast forward to that a little bit. That was 15 years for everyone listening. Just so you know, it wasn't like an overnight thing. It was 15 years of starting part-time and working my way up to the C-suite level. Well, that's still incredibly impressive. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's It, it was a blast. Love that. But then you left and what did you leave to go do? I left to pursue podcasting full-time. That's what I'm so excited about. Right? So, it sounds like a joke, though. Most people hear that like podcasting full time. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll get into that. <laughs> well, podcasting is it's more relevant these days than like AM, FM radio, right? Oh, yeah. Def I mean, I, well, if there's any radio people here, then no, radio is king, right? But uh, if there's no radio people listening, then yeah, podcasting is 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 taking over. I've, I've got a friend who is, he came from MTV. He did a lot of radio stuff. And the way he describes it, and I thought it was just beautifully said, so I'll repeat it here. He said that podcasting is like offense and radio and TV is like defense. So they're always fighting to keep it when we're just totally thriving in this space. So podcasting through and through all the data shows, and I don't, I don't want to get all that boring stuff, but it's just in every way, shape and form, it's the future. Right. And last time I checked, there's over 3 million different podcasts. There are not that many that are active, but yeah, it's like 90% like, don't make it. Yeah, something yeah, something along those lines. So at any given time, this is a strange stat. There's only about 400,000 shows that are actively per producing episodes of their show, and the rest of them are inactive. And it's always like more shows are always starting, but as fast as one starts, one's kind of leaving, which is an interesting thing. But as the barrier to entry gets easier, 
as far as like the financial investment, but also the time investment, the tech that you have to learn, as all that gets easier, we'll probably see a higher success rate. And as long as the tools keep on coming out to serve those people that are podcasting, we'll see that increase. But yeah, at any given time, like 400,000 active shows, and like you said, millions of inactive feeds, but they still have, some of them have backlogs of many years of content that because so many people in podcasting do it evergreen, people can go back and listen to that and enjoy it just like the day it came out. Yeah, I love it because I I tell the people that I work with that are survivors or special needs families, you know, put like I have hearing aids because I lost my hearing due to the domestic violence. But I tell them, you know, put on one of the episodes, black screen your phone and listen to it for inspiration. If you're waiting on a loved one in surgery or you're waiting to go into court or something like that, use it for inspiration and strength to know that you're worth fighting for. And mm. that even the tiniest little spark can start a wildfire. So that's what we try to, to put out there for everybody is that they're not alone because I went through it alone and it's the worst experience anyone can go through. So you left to pursue your dream of podcasting and you created what I actually started with, which was pop match. Correct. Yeah. And now yeah, it's yeah. huge. It, it's, it's done very well. And I'm, I'm really thankful for that. Like it, it really has. And it's been an absolute blast. I mean, I, I went from, Again, aerospace and quick disclaimer for anybody listening. Um, I wasn't an astronaut, I wasn't a skydiver, and I wasn't a fighter pilot because those are, and you've had a fighter pilot on here. Yeah, Dom hey, slices Dom when here. he goes by, which, by the way, I encourage everybody that episode, if my memory serves me correctly, came out on August 18th, 2022. So scroll back in the backlogs of uh, a contagious smile and go listen to that episode with Dom. Super fascinating stuff, by the way. Really enjoyed that. Um, so that's a real fighter pilot. If you want to hear that story, mine, when I was in aerospace, I was working behind a computer. So, um, <laughs> I, I shifted from that to podcasting, not from jumping out of airplanes or anything crazy. So <laughs> well, Dom actually also talked on our team talk, which was fantastic. He did a great job with them too. And they loved him. So that's been amazing. Well. I, I, I don't doubt that for a second. He did. I mean, you did such a good job interviewing him again. I, I don't want to just make this whole thing a call to action to go listen to another episode, but everyone <laughs> should pause this and go hear that one first. So, oh, thank you. So what made you decide to do pod match? Like it's a, it's an amazing, anybody who wants to start pod matching, anybody who wants to start doing podcasting. That's the very first place I honestly went to. It's, it, it was my Bible of podcasting. It really was. Thank you. Thank you. It, like literally, Victoria making my day right now. So thank you so, so much. Um, <laughs> means a lot. Um, yeah. So it, for me, like it, I learned a little bit about entrepreneurship throughout my, my business ventures, right. And stuff like that. And basically what I found it, to simplify entrepreneurship, I know this is an entrepreneurship show, but this is a bonus for everybody. There's basically four steps. And again, I'm simplifying to the law, the, the, like the rawest form. Number one, find an area of passion. I had started a podcast, so I became passionate about it. Number two, get into the community of that area of passion. So for me, I started speaking at all the events, going to all the meetups, connecting with any podcaster I could. Step three, find a simple problem that they're struggling with. Like what's a simple problem? And for me, I identified that podcast hosts were having trouble finding guests for their show, or at least ideal guests. Like they couldn't find the person they wanted on their show. And then step four is to actually offer a simple solution to that problem. So for anyone wondering, like, what the heck is this Podmatch thing? Podmatch is a, a software, it's just a website you can go to, that'll automatically connect podcast guests and hosts together for interviews. So if you're a podcast guest wanting to talk about something like domestic violence, like your journey with that, it'll find you a podcast host that says that's the guest that they are searching for and automatically put you together. For lack of a better term, like, again, it, it works like a dating app, right? But it's got a deeper <laughs> podcast interview instead of a date. So we, we don't guarantee dates, but we can help you out with podcast interviews. So it's yeah, a lot so that's safer. Kind of Right. Yes, for sure. Um, that That's where the whole thing came from was just me again, being passionate about podcasting, getting in the community, finding the problem. And this was just the thing that so many podcasters kept on telling me, I'm really struggling with this. So we just built it out and just decided to, we put it out there really early. Uh, Victoria, I don't know how er you didn't join that early because I know how long you've been in this. But like when we first launched, we didn't even have a logo on the website. Like really? it, it was just like, we were just like, hey, does this work? Can everyone tell us? And everyone's like, yeah, it works. It's super ugly but it works. But in the, the day, I'm like, you know what? Let's just get it out there and see if it serves somebody. And so that's what we did. We just put it out there and we focused still to this day on continuous improvement, making it better for people. It is fantastic. And it, and I mean, it, it gives such great information and the links to everybody and where they are. It is just an amazing site. Um, you know, I've been doing this for so long and then people were like, you need to get it out further. And that's what I've been doing. And, and, and the connections I've gotten from Podmatch, thanks to you, Alex, is like I'm going on a um, L.A. talk show at the end of the month due to people hearing this. And it, it just blows it's my amazing. mind. I've actually gone places and and ba the back of my phone has um, I've actually designed it where it says a contagious smile. And very um, nice. And people are like, 
your voice sounds familiar. Oh, okay. And a lot of people recognize my daughter because they did a national story on her and she won an Emmy for her part of it. And um, for everything she survived and, and a lot of people recognize her, but they were like, how have I heard your voice before? And and I said, I have a podcast. They're like I listened to that. And I'm like, oh, that's oh, so cool. That what, is the, the coolest thing. That is the coolest thing I've ever heard. I, I have never had that happen just so you know, but uh, <laughs> I'm waiting for the day that someone rams be like, Hey, you sound familiar. Are you that podcast guy? Hey, I I'll do love it. I'll do it for happen. you. <laughs> but you have to pretend like we haven't met. I don't know. Like wear a hat. I mean, put on big sunglasses, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I'll be like, I've never heard. I don't know you, but I know the voice. Know. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So we really advocate for people to show their inner strength and use their voice. So if somebody really, this is why I was another, another reason why I was so happy to have you. What is a way for someone who can start in this environment where I teach people that this is safe, you are in control. If you don't like it, don't air it. If you want to edit it, you can. Um, this is a great place to bring resources and surviving to the other people. How would you tell, how would you tell somebody, because everyone's heard how I started, how to start this and make it actually not one of the 90%. Yeah. And, and so first off, I want to make sure we get clear on this. We're talking about the like starting a podcast, being yes. the host, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. And I, I knew that's where you're going. I want to make sure anyone listening is following as well. So like being a podcast host, the, the very first thing that I find, this is the toughest thing. I hate to start off with the toughest one, but like, it comes down to a level of authenticity and transparency. You've got to be willing to be vulnerable. You know, actually to quote back to that episode with with Dom that I already referenced, something he said is that it's okay to say that you need help because when you do, people are going to show up out of the woodworks to help you. That's just how, that's human nature. And so when you show up to share, if you change, now I get it. Some people might be in a situation where you do actually need to not use your actual name. Like you need to use an alias and that is okay. But the the more truthful you can be about exactly where you are and who you are, and not just saying I need help, but saying this is the help I'm attempting to offer. Can you help me offer this help, right? That's got kind of getting into some metadata there, if you will, right? But when you can do that, it just goes so far. And Victoria, one of the things I think that has helped that I shouldn't say I think, I know has helped your podcast get to where it is already, like miles ahead of people that are been doing this as short of a time as you have, is the fact that you show up as you transparently, you don't hold back, you don't change your life like it, there's i haven't listened to all your episodes but there's not inconsistency where i'm like last week she said the opposite of that right like i don't see that happening and so for me the first thing is sitting back before you even start the podcast and saying can i actually do this in an authentic way and be transparent about where i'm at and not try to sound like the person who's already come out on the other side of something that maybe i'm still in D does that make sense what i'm sharing perfect sense perfect sense good I, and I, I think that that's tough for a lot of us because you want to I want to say it's like in a tasteful way, but you want to seem like the expert, but maybe you're not yet. And that's not a problem. And here's the analogy I give, because I, I I have a name in podcasting and I've worked really hard to get there. I'm thankful for it. But still to this day, I struggle with imposter syndrome. Sometimes I just, I end up on a stage or talking to someone that I just, I'm like, how did I get here? Right? Like, or why am I here? And at the end of the day, what I remind myself, the mindset and picture I give myself is, two people climbing a mountain. So I want you all to go with me on this one. So act like you're that person going to start a podcast. We're climbing a mountain together, right? And I'm up on top of what's like a big boulder and it's quite steep. And there's somebody just below it that you're trying to help out. Now, all that they can't get up themselves. They just can't get over it. All you have to do is put your hand down, go hand in hand and pull them up to your level using that leverage, getting them up there. And now they're on your same level. That is one of the most helpful things you can do for somebody. Now let's, let's, let's flip the script and say, you know what? I'm the guru. I'm at the top of the mountain. If you're struggling to get over that boulder, I'm yelling from the top of the mountain. Oh, you want to go a little bit to the right, go this way, go that way, do this, do that. It's not as helpful. Like right. it can still help and people can do that, but it takes a level of them being willing to do it themselves versus again, going hand in hand and pulling them to where you are, which is just one simple step ahead of where they are. And I find that the podcasters are doing the best are the ones that, are that one step ahead. They're openly admitting, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm further than I was yesterday. And I'm going to help you get to where I am today. So tomorrow you can be even further along. I want to see you climb that mountain and outpace me through and through. The people that show up with that level of authenticity, that level of transparency, that level of a desire to serve are the ones that are doing absolutely the best job. And I, I think, again, if I can get one thing through to everybody, if you're thinking about going on this journey of podcasting because you believe you have a story that's going to serve someone in this space, this is how you do it really well. I love that because I've met a few people that 
have never done it. They, they're thinking about doing it. And I said, hey, let's do a roundtable. Let's get it out there. And then come co-host with me a couple of times. Let's get comfortable. And then, you know, maybe go and branch out on your own when you're ready. But until then, I'm right here. Now I have people like constantly, hey, let's do our own co-hosting show together. And I'm like, I'm already doing great. And like, you know, yeah, and it, that's enough. Three yeah, is it, enough. It, I do it, one. It, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I got three and I have like two others on the on the table trying to get me. My to goodness. <laughs> and it and it's like. When I've worked with such great people and, and I'm like, look, it's men are attacked. Women are attacked. Let me help. I, I had such a great guy that I, I worked with um, and I interviewed and I was like, you need to be doing your own. You need to be promoting more than your book. Let's get you on. And now I've had him on two shows back to back and he hit. And I told him it's our numbers are not because of, of us. Our numbers are because of guests like you. And when he did his, he hit 1.2 million in 24 hours when wow. I had him on. And then wow. when we um, introed his book, it was like 650,000. And that wasn't me. I told him, I said, that's all you. That's yeah. all you because it's the authenticity. It's the genuineness. People can tell if you're real because you can tell if they're fake, if you can tell if they mean it wholeheartedly. When someone comes to me and says, I'm going in this situation, you will get me from the moment to I help you plan safety in your home until I can get you out of your home all the way in between. And that's the difference. That. You know, yeah. you're not just going to get me for that five minutes and then I'm out. You're not going to get somebody else. If you want to talk to me, you can get me. That's the difference. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to help all these other people feel is podcasting gives these people, Alex, an opportunity to sit somewhere that they're safe, sit somewhere that they're comfortable Nobody has to see their face if they only want to do an audible and they can talk and they can talk to people like themselves. They can help bring inspiration on the journey of healing. And so many people want to, but they're afraid to. And that's why I love the fact that maybe you also can give some to uh, pointers to them because you're like my guru. So, you know, to, well, to be glad, able to <laughs> glad to help, you know, to that point at the end of the day, like hearing a big number, like, like that you shared with somebody. Now, sometimes, and you and I both know this, that can, can be scary to some people because they're like, oh, I'm really going to put myself out there. And that, that's an, not a typical result, not saying it won't happen, hey. but the, the mentality we have to keep, and again, going back to my own journey, is do for one what you wish you could do for all. And what that means is pretend like there's only one person listening. And this is kind of that next point I'll share. So beyond, again, being willing to be transparent and authentic, it's picking the one person that you serve. So that requires you to sit back and say, why am I doing this? Is it for myself? And that's a perfect reason for it. Is it for my avatar, which just means an ideal fictitious listener or someone that you actually know saying, if I could just preach to this one person to help them get through this situation they're in, then it's worth it. Right. And, right. and, and find that person. And I find that again, starting with that authenticity and transparency, moving into why and finding the person that you serve and saying, I'm just here to serve that one person today. And then letting the numbers be the numbers. They don't really matter if you're helping the one person, right? Absolutely. Maybe you're helping 10 people, but if you're helping one, it's worth it. Uh, think about, I mean, really think about that. Like, I don't mean to go on a side tangent here, but it, no, I agree. if you help one person get out of a bad situation that they've, they've been in for time, like, is it not worth it? Like, who cares Absolutely. if there's a hundred more, like one person, that's one life that is going to be forever changed. Like, my goodness, is it worth it? Right? Right. Absolutely. So I don't know. Oh, most people who, who know me know I'll do this and you will not hurt my feelings. So you heard some of my shows, which I am just like in awe of that you would listen, <laughs> but dissect what we do and tell me how I can be better, what I'm doing wrong. Oh, well, I'm putting I, him on the spot. <laughs> put, put me on the spot and my, my wheels are turning. I got like, no, I'm just kidding. I'm like, I have 300 things. I was like, I'm hoping you'd ask. I bust out a list. I'm just kidding. I don't have that. Um, it's okay if you do. I can't I, I learn if I'm not taught. I, I think that you recently invested in a microphone. Am I right in saying that? I Is did. That, I did. That was going to be, I had that written down as a suggestion to give you after, but here we are. I think that the, the sound quality, when you can get the guest and the host on the same level, brings a sense of comfort to listeners. Now, I'm not telling people to go out, including you, to go out and spend 10 grand on like some studio, but what you have is already 10x better than what I previously heard. And again, that just brings a calmness to, to listenership. I think that's really good. Um, the other thing that I really like to do is to, that I think would be helpful as well, is to try to dive as deep as you can. I don't mean to like pry with your guests, right? But just see like if you can get something below the surface even more, right? Take it one level deeper. Okay. And and so for me, even just asking a question like this, this is one 
I've been asked this one other time and I've been on hundreds of shows. So like only one other show has ever asked me this. I think people were scared of it, right? But you're willing to put yourself aside and ask a deeper question. So I think that if you can always find a way to go a little bit deeper with people to get that story, that's great. And then the last thing I'll share is if somehow you can like, a contagious smiles and name it, right? Can you somehow talk about like a story with that guest that'll get people to laugh, smile, just think it's like maybe almost end with something uplifting, right? Like not that your show is dark and doom and gloom or anything like that, but can you somehow end with something that's like, when I'm finished listening, I'm like, ah, that was fun, right? Like almost to do that. And I think that, okay, so again, quality of, of con- mic, like the sound quality, right? Followed by going even deeper and then ending with something that causes that smile to happen, I think would be really great. Th- those, that's my only feedback I've got right now. That's it? Do you want more? I mean, I can sure. try to Sure, I more. mean, I can't get better. <laughs> like, I do want to know that one question that only one person's asked you. Um, oh, the, the, the question one person that asked me is for feedback in real time on with the oh. group. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, um, that's, let me, let me look at one other thing here. I'm, I'm literally, for everyone listening, uh, you are officially an outcast for just a moment while I go to Apple Podcast so I can look at Victoria's podcast here. Uh-oh. Um Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. I got another, another piece of feedback here. Okay. I noticed a lot of your episodes. I don't know if they all do. But it starts with a contagious smiles blank, right? And then continues. Yeah. It seems like it might be all of them. Uh, because that's the name of your show, you're giving up some prime real estate as to what the topic really is. So I would suggest, and at any point, you can go back and change that. Some people go back and change all their titles. Like I will be doing that. <laughs> um, I'm not trying to cause extra work for you. You can always just do it moving forward. But use that prime real estate to really share what someone's going to get by listening to it. So as quickly as you can get to the point. And maybe it's a little, it could be a little clickbaity. That's not terrible as long as it's delivering on the promise it makes. But I would really hone in on what you can do with that ideal. Uh, again, that's that's prime real estate for somebody, for me, like even looking at it on looking through the app right now that I'm using, I can't see the whole title, but I can see a contagious smile on all of them. If that was removed, I could see a little bit more about like what the episode is going to be about to see if I should click into it. So that's what I've got there. And then... Let me see if I got one more thing. Maybe I don't know how often, how long people stay engaged listening. You'd have to go to your, your actual analytics to see that. But for me, when I was doing an interview podcast and I'm Victoria, you're way more fun than I am. Let's put it that way. First no off, way. So people found me boring. So when I did 55 minute episodes, people stopped, started leaving at around 40 minutes. So I cut my interviews down to 40 minutes and then the completion rate went from 70% to almost hundred percent. Uh, and I wanted people to listen to the whole thing because some of the end of it was really valuable information. And that's officially all I have for you right now. Hope that's helpful. <laughs> yeah, I did notice that I like instead of doing just the name, I started realizing and I did, but nobody can see it because it's at the end where I would say, you know, like I had this guy, Sean on Sean comes on and talks about how he is the supporting uh, partner of a survivor of sexual violence. And I added that, but it was after the contagious smile. So people probably couldn't see it, but I didn't want to just say a contagious smile sits down with Alex or Sean, because they're going to say, well, who's that? And you know, I'm not, why would I listen to this? Cause I don't know who it is or what they're going to bring to me. So right. that, that's, that's why, why I tried. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's why getting creative with it is great. And this, again, like this is all in the name of service. So if someone's listening and you're thinking, hey, I might I might want to start sharing my story on a podcast, like as, as being a host of a show, you want the right people to find it. So make it as easy as possible for them to locate it. So literally like the apps that we use to listen to podcasts are getting very smart. So you want to make titles of the episodes what people are actually searching. Someone might actually be searching for like, like a domestic violence survivor, should I start a podcast, right? Like, and if the episode's name, like that was not a good title, by the way, Victoria. Just so you know, I take a little bit of time to figure these things out and I get some help as well. But you find something that's like, okay, this is what people are actually searching for. So why don't I actually name it that? Because it delivers on that promise. And the more you can do that, again, the better it is going to be at getting it in front of the person who's looking for it. Because now they know what to find. Um, it, it, recently, I was on, someone asked me, not on, not live. Somebody actually asked me for some podcast feedback. And uh what she was doing is she was only putting in the name of her guests and her guests were I'm not trying to be rude. They were like me though. They weren't like well-known names. They were just average people, which is great. That those make some of the best podcast guests yes, are just the, the person who hasn't even been on a podcast is typically one of the best guests because mm-hmm. they're going to share transparently. It's going to really serve. But again, people don't know who they are. And so I told her, I'm like, Hey, 
you can keep their name in it, maybe just their first name even, because no one knows who this is. But if you told me that this episode was about how somebody started a business at 19 and then failed and, and struggled here, but then came full circle, like if you could find a way to put that in a title, that would be interesting to me versus just a name that I don't know because I can't identify with that. I don't know if that speaks to me or not. Does that make sense what I'm sharing? Absolutely, it does. Cool. Absolutely, that's all. That's all I got for you, though. So I hope that's helpful. <laughs> Absolutely, it is. You know, and I tell people all the time. I, I literally came through this. I've only. I haven't even been doing podcasting for a year. I learned how to do it by myself. I had no training on it at all. I've done all of the producing and, and the marketing and the advertising and all of it on my own. And during this time, I even had an amputation during this period, and we still came back on. We didn't miss a beat. And wow. it's like if I can do this then anyone could come on and do this because I am not the guru you are. I don't have that background in this at all. And people are like, well, you need to do this and that. And, you know, and I'm like, I'm trying, but I'm, I'm not, if I can get my message to one person that I'm, I am doing what I'm meant yeah. to do. Like that's where that's I want to be. So that's amazing. If I could share something right there with what you just said, it, sure. it embodies the most, one of the most important things in podcasting, I think. And it's this, if your content's good, people will forgive you for the lack of quality. And I'm not saying you have a lack of quality, but in general, if someone's like, well, even Victoria has a mic. I got to get that mic. No, you got to get your message out there. You can focus on continuous improvement later. Again, people will forgive you if the quality is not where it should be yet. What they won't forgive you for is if you have all the best tech in the world and your quality, the quality of your actual content is garbage. Like you right. don't share transparently. You don't share in a way that serves. You show up as a sales pitch. I've seen people that have literally spent tens of thousands of dollars on their podcasting gear and everything. They're like, why is it, why is it not growing? I'm like, because you're, you're BSing people all the time. Like nothing you're saying is actually serving people. You put this facade on, you've got all the gear. You're trying to sound like somebody you're not. But sometimes I've seen some podcasts literally blow up where someone is using their phone in their car, talking into it because the content is so raw and so good and helpful. Now I'm not suggesting you necessarily do that. Like take right. some pride in it, but yeah. I'm just saying, if your content's good, people forgive you for it. You can focus on continuous improvement later. Everything you see here, I did not have when I started. I started talking into my cell phone when I first started podcasting. That's all I knew how to do. That's all I had. But I knew I had a message that I needed to get out to the world. And I wasn't about to let feeling like I need to have everything to get started stop me from starting. Right. And see, that's the, the great thing is we've had some wonderful people reach out. Um, I don't know if you know who this group is. Do you know who Wilson Phillips is? I do not. Oh, right. Oh. Like, you know, I said something the other day and somebody was like, who's Roseanne? And I said, Are you, really? You don't know who Roseanne is? Um, Wilson Phillips is the mama and the papa's kids that sing like, hold on. You're you're Googling them right now, aren't you? I am. Sorry. I, yeah. I should be listening to you. Go ahead. I'm, I'm back. I'm not no, Googling them. I'm just like, should I? you made me feel bad. You made me feel like I got to know these people. <laughs> Wilson Phillips was a huge band in the 90s. Huge. Uh, they did hold on, release me. Um great wonderful music and their mom their dads were members of um the mamas and the papas and i think the beach boys and so they have this fantastic band well they the lead singer is china phillips and she uh reached out and did like this long video with my for my daughter and she's coming on my daughter's show my daughter is so excited cool. and That's then amazing. we've had people like aram from the blacklist which I'm a blacklist fanatic. Um, he did a long video for her, uh, uh, Gary Lavox from Rascal Flats. And I told her, you know, from the beginning, because she has special needs. And I'm like, you treat Gary Lavox the same as you treat a special needs miracle kid who's 13. They're the same people. You treat them all the same. Like people, you know, asked me if I was nervous, like my husband said, are you nervous? You're actually interviewing your guru. And I was like, no, because we both Good. put Good. our pants on the same every day. I mean, I am right. like I have so much respect and uh, and in honor to you because you taught me where I am. But I was like, you know, w when I ran corporate, I treated my assistant the same as I did my receptionist as a CEO. We just have a title, and that's really nothing. Like a title right, is, yeah. you know, we're people, and we need to be treated like a person with respect. That's how you know we do it, and we take that approach to it. So. I totally difference. agree with that. And by the way, like people, if you bring on a guest that like, again, you're listening to this, you're like, I'm going to start this. I'm going to interview people like really take hold of it. Victoria's saying here, like you have not treated me any different than I feel like you would treat someone in your family or a friend. And I respect that so much. 
occasionally I get on a podcast where somebody treats me like I'm some sort of royalty. <laughs> well, and you are. They're, they're, I'm just not like. You know. I, I'm not. Um, <laughs> but, well, you and know. They're, they're, they're clearly nervous and they, and all that. And that's okay. I get it. Sometimes it happens. I immediately try to calm people down. And if I can't, the interview doesn't really go well because mm-hmm. they, they I don't know what it is, but they feel like maybe they have to be different around me. And it never, again, going back to authenticity and transparency, if you can treat me like an, another human being and having a conversation, that's valuable for somebody to hear. Yes. And, and I get it. I've I've interviewed a couple of people that I was really, I, I couldn't, I couldn't shake it. I was nervous to interview them. And I, and the interviews were just okay because you clearly they? could tell, uh, well, one of them was Seth Godin and I was super, he's, he's like, a, the, he's the only person I know who has first name basis with Google. If you type in the, just Seth into Google, he's the first thing that shows up, right? Like, so he's big in the marketing world. I was terrified and I kept on being like, man, why? Like, I can't get through this. And the interview was just okay because I was afraid to go too deep. I was, like, like I was giving you that advice, right? Like be willing to go an, an, another extra layer, layer deeper, right? I was too scared to do that. And it was an, it was an okay interview. I, some people say it was pretty good, right? Like, but the, a week later, I'll never forget the week later, I interviewed somebody else. And people were like, that's your best interview you've ever done. It was that guy's first time on a podcast. I had never heard of him. He just had a story that I thought would be really interesting, but I treated him like another human being, right? right. Versus somebody on a pedestal. And so yeah, the, the more we can learn to do that and just calm ourselves down and know that, you know what? We put on our pants the same way. Like you said, Victoria, right? Like we're not much different. Let's just have that conversation it makes it more interesting to listen to. It's, it's like sitting in a room with two friends talking versus us standing in front of a celebrity and trying to listen to each other talk to a celebrity. It's like not fun. Clearly, it's like, be quiet so I can talk to this person, right? Like, it's just, it, that's like kind of the difference, if you will. Who is your ultimate guest that you would love to have? Oh, man. Um, ultimate guest I'd love to have. Now, I got to look at a bookshelf, if that's okay. I'm trying to okay. see who here has like really had an impact. We're talking like just people that are alive right because i can think yeah. of a lot of people in history that are like would be cool oh, yeah. but okay alive people um actually you know what brendan bruchard um is a guy he's like a high performance coach he's he said something a long time ago which actually i'll share now because it relates really well to our conversation it was when i was starting to really step into podcasting full time and i was really struggling and i read his book high performance habits and there was six high performing habits in there and five of them, like the first five, I'm like, got it, got it, got it. I'm I'm great. You know, obviously thinking too highly of myself. But in real in reality, I was like, you know what? I actually embody these things fairly well. I've, I've worked on them. Got to the sixth one, which was courage. And I realized what was holding me back was the fact that I was just trembling in fear to make a change that had to happen. And the way that it was said in the book is being afraid, or sorry, being courageous means being afraid than doing what you have to do anyway. Being courageous means being afraid than doing what you have to do anyway. And when I finally took heed and hold of that and left the comfort of my job to pursue entrepreneurship full-time, I excelled. And I'm so thankful for that. So I would love to interview Brendan Bruchard just because that was a defining moment in my life. It's gotten me where I am today. That's amazing. Yeah, I love that quote. That's a great quote. What is an Alex quote? Who's your idea? I got to hear. What's what's an ideal person for you? Sorry, I got to cut you off. I got to hear it. Um... Oof, I haven't thought about it. Um, you know, my idea living, I guess, because obviously I'd be interviewing them. You know, people are gonna well, I would say my daughter. Um, I interviewed her because she was told she'd never survive and she mm. doesn't have a tongue and she still speaks and she has her own podcast. Um honestly, Alex, the person doesn't have a name. It's a person that inspires themselves whether it's for themselves or their family, and realizes, I don't deserve this abuse. I'm better than this. No one raises their hand and says, I want to be beaten. One hit, one kick, one punch is too many. I don't care. It's not acceptable to lay your hands on someone in an unwarranted manner. And even if at that moment your self-esteem is just in the tank, you look at your kids and say, it's my responsibility to prepare you for the next role of life. And if you're watching this, then this is going to be how you act and you're going to treat your partner growing up. And she or he realizes that. And then they reach out, which I've had people do and say, I've read your book. I've listened to your podcast. And because of you, I'm ready to go. And that is my hero because I, like I said, I went through this by myself and I was scared at my mind. And I had my daughter in the hospital. I was in a wheelchair 
nobody was helping me. I was all by myself. And that's why I started this is because nobody deserves to go through this alone. You already feel like you're alone. And when I have that person that comes and says, I'm worth fighting for, help me. That's my hero. So everyone listening, I had a good answer, but Victoria had an excellent answer. That, <laughs> that I mean, really, that's a, I feel bad for even like mentioning a name. Like you're, I, that, that's perfect. I mean, that is just shows me that the next year, 11 months in your podcast, when we're recording this, the next year of your podcast is just going to continue to excel because of that vision you just planted. That's beautiful. I love oh, that. Oh, thank you. How can I make mine better beside the the tips you've already given me? Because I, I been, my husband and I have been doing this out of our own pocket from day one. And I want, like we started breeding golden retrievers because the average person has to wait five years on a service dog. And we've been paying for all that. And now we're at the point where we're starting to, you know, see, but it's not really enough to keep doing what we were doing. And I don't want to give up what we're doing. So do you have any tips or advice? I mean, we're not trying to get, you know, rich off of it. We're trying to be able to just keep doing what we're doing to help others. Yeah. Are you guys um, a 501c3 or nonprofit? We're in the process, but it takes Good. a while to get approved, but we've already started the paperwork and all that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that would be my ultimate suggestion would be to start finding donors uh, of people that companies and people that would like some mm -hmm basically like to be involved in what you're doing, right? Even if it means exchanging that for some form of advertisement, I would just make sure it's in line, right? Like I, I really don't want to hear you doing a mattress commercial. Unless I don't see me doing that. True. Yeah, because I, some of my favorite podcasters, when they finally like blew up and hit like that threshold of being able to bring in full-time income through ads, they're like talking about, hey, you need this pillow if you want to sleep better. And I like text these guys. I'm like, are you kidding me, bro? You sold out. I'm like, your podcast <laughs> about entrepreneurship. And they're like, yeah, but entrepreneurs need to sleep. I'm like, so does everyone else. So does my dog, right? Like, I feel um, so much better. Thank you, Alex. Because we've had people that have offered, you know, monetization to have us advertise for them. And I'm, I'm like, nope, not a good fit. Nope, not a good fit. Nope. Mm -mm. And, you know, even my husband's like, well, why are you saying no? And I said, because I really don't think that this is not a brand I want to be affiliated with. It's just not right. someone that I it's, think is a good fit. Line. Again, like if you come from a place fully of service, right? You're here to serve the listenership. I think even the advertisements, and some people will, will argue this, but I think the advertisements, if you do that route, they even have to serve really well. Um, if it's okay, I, I've got some ideas around podcast monetization that are unconventional. So I could I could give you something there if that's helpful. Maybe that, are you maybe kidding? for everyone <laughs> listening as well. So. Um, yeah, the, the first thing that I, I like to mention, um, is to turn content into a book that you can sell and, and that does cause more work. So I'm not going to dive too deep on that, but if you have like, let's just say 15 really impactful episodes that people always comment on and always say, this was like, this is what I need to hear. This is what I was looking for. Turn it into a book offer it on your podcast. Basically be like, Hey, we'll give you. I don't know, 50 percent off on it, right? Like I, I, you won't get rich doing that, but if you also transparently say this is how we keep the lights on with this podcast is through this book, it's going to help. Buy it for yourself, buy it for a loved one, right? That's going, that's going, that's suffering with what we're talking through, right? That's a really impactful thing you can do. And the thing is, everyone's like, oh, write a book. No, no, don't write a book. Use the content that you already have. You can hire somebody for very affordably to be able to transcribe it into something that makes coherent sense in a chapter format and not spend a lot. And you can actually make a little bit of money with that. So um, anyway, I like that, that option. Uh, another one that's really interesting. And I think that this one's, uh, a really fun one, um, is to offer, what I call like a marketing boost. So if you do have a guest on that has some sort of product or service, some way they help and, and they want to get the word out there more and they have a little bit of a budget say, Hey, you know what? Let's run ads against this on social media. So the right people get to hear it. They'll find you, they'll find out what you do and together we'll grow the podcast and just tell them, I'm going to keep 30% of whatever you decide to spend on it because I need to keep the lights on, right? And the rest of it will put out there. And if someone's like, yeah, I'll put $500 on it. You're keeping a percentage of that, earning that little bit of revenue and growing the show at the same time while helping them convert. And if you get people, like, let's imagine you do that with the right guest who's like, wow, I'm actually serving a lot of people, making money off of this. Here's, let's throw a thousand more dollars at it. Let's throw 5,000 more. Let's keep that going. Uh, I have a friend and he has a guest who just, who planted this seed in his mind. He's like, hey, can, we, can I do ads against this podcast episode? And he's like, sure. Dude's been, I don't know how many years it's been. He's doing a dollar a day for as long as he can remember. And it's still that person's most popular podcast episode. It's just a dollar a day, but it's converting for both of them and working well. So I just call that like a, a marketing boost. And that would just be like a one-on-one -on -one thing with guests. So that's another interesting idea there. 
listen, see, you're just a wealth of knowledge, just an absolute wealth of knowledge. I love it. <laughs> so you have to give us a great story before we go. And you have to give us one of your quotes, an Alex quote, because leaving a quote that you have given, it makes everybody quote you. And you, at the end of the day, you want people quoting you. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I enjoy that. Um, I thank you for that. First off, I appreciate it. Uh, so, do you want me to start with a quote? Where should I go? You want me to? Lead I was going to let you have it. You're going to let me have it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's my favorite. So, yeah, um, a, a story about my life. Growing up, um, this is something that I typically leave out. But uh, as a kid, I was actually dyslexic. Really? And I, yeah, and I really, I really struggled, like really bad. I was homeschooled all the way through because I just. I had a really hard time learning, at least conventionally. Let's put it that way. I've always been good at doing what I, I want to do, but if I don't have a hundred and ten percent interest in it, I really struggled with it. And so for me, I'll, I'll like I'll never forget. I was out in a doctor office, doctor's office. I think I was about twelve, and uh, the doctor wanted to. It was one checking my progress, and he had me try to read something. I couldn't read it, could not do it, and I like, could not get. I mean, these are like. And he even said it. I don't think he meant for it to hurt, but it did. He's like, this is like, he's like five-year-olds read this. Like five-year-olds can read this. And I just couldn't, I couldn't put it together. And in that moment, I didn't even realize it. Like years later, obviously, and thank God for therapy and people like you, Victoria, that just help us all on the way, right? Um, I, I realized it created a fear in me of reading in public, of writing in public. And still to this day, if I'm on stage, because I, I speak a lot, and I'm very thankful for that. If you put a whiteboard in, in a in a dry erase marker in my hand, I'll start sweating. I'll turn bright red. I'll start stuttering. I won't be able to write anything on on that. And people are like, wow, you're always so well-versed and so prepared. It's because I'm terrified to read a piece of paper, even if I know what it says. But if it's in front of me and you're out there, it's scary for me. And so for me, it's one of those things that like throughout the years, I, I never thought I'd do anything front-facing. And what I mean by that is, I never thought I'd speak. I never thought I'd write. I never thought I'd create content. I figured I'd be a behind the scenes administrative guy because numbers always came easy to me. So I was like, I can, I can do all that. I just can't be the guy in front of things. And so like for a long time, for years, like even when I was doing the tech startup, startup stuff, I was fine unless you put me in front of people. And I, I'll never forget it. I, I was working on in WordPress, doing blogging because I figured out I actually like to write, which how weird, right? Like I was like, wow, I actually really enjoy this. Like this is, I, I'm really having a good, good time. I got asked to speak at a at a conference about content creation, about writing. And immediately I saw the like the, the invitation come through and I'm like, no, like that's that's not for me. Like if you knew my past, you know this is not, you've got the wrong guy, clearly have the wrong guy. And I'll, I'll never forget it though. Something inside me, and I happen to, to be, uh, uh, I believe in Jesus, that's just me. I'm not trying to push religion or faith on anybody, but for me, that's what I believe in. I felt something inside me tell me, do it. And I responded, I'm like, sure, tell me what to do. And I'll never forget it. When I was like backstage, my wife came with me because she wanted to, to see this. She was like, Alex, sure. Like, I'll, I'll watch that. I just remember looking at him like, I don't know how I got here. I don't know why I'm here. Like, I, I don't understand what I'm about to do. I don't even know how I'm going to talk. I have no idea. I went out there terrified, shaking, sweating, wore a jacket so you couldn't tell, of course. But I walked out there and delivered what was considered one of the more valuable presentations at that entire conference. And all I did was shared what I knew, that journey I had been on. And since then, one thing has led to another. And still to this day, I get on stages and as I'm walking up, I'm like, how did I get here? Why am I here? But I remind myself that I'm here to serve the one person who needs me most. And so I, I, I want to share this quote with everybody. And this is an Alex Sanfilippo original that goes along with this. And this is something I've had to remind myself of. But each and every one of us has greatness and creativity within ourselves. So the quote is, you have greatness and creativity within yourself. I believe we're all created beings. And as created beings, our job is to create, to get out there and serve. And no matter what's happened to you in the past, what's happened to you today, what's happening to you tomorrow, it doesn't disqualify you from being a creative individual that has greatness inside them that can serve the world. My life is a testimony of that. I've not had it near as bad as many, many people. I don't even want to compare my journey to somebody else's, but I can tell you, even with what I've gone through, I know now that I still have greatness and creativity within myself, and I can use that to serve the person who needs me most. So Victoria, that's the, the story I'll share with you in some of my life that I've never gotten to share on a podcast before. So I'm, I'm happy to have gotten to get into that. That's amazing. Thank you so much. And thank you for finding the time and your incredibly busy schedule to oh, come course. on here and be on here with us. You, uh, 
gotten checked off my list. So thank you so much for that. <laughs> <laughs> honored. Absolutely honored. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can you tell everybody where they can find you? I'll make sure it's all, of course, in the notes as well. Yeah, sure. And, and thank you for that. So uh, everything I do is podcasting through and through that. That's pretty much all I do. But I'll, I'll give you a link that'll have everything you ever need about me. You can find me everywhere from there. And that link is podpros.com forward slash win. What it'll give you are five quick wins for being a podcast guest or host, whether you're new, experienced, haven't started, give you five quick wins you can read in less than five minutes. I don't want your email address or anything like that. It just go check it out if you're at all interested in podcasting on either side of the mic or want to grow your craft. And again, that's podpros.com forward slash win. But Victoria, I have to say this, A Contagious Smile is a fantastic podcast. What you're doing here, how you're serving is just absolutely incredible. I recommend everybody who's hearing this, go listen to more episodes of this show. It is going to bring a smile to your face and really just add value to you. So again, thank you so, so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time on A Contagious Smile, where every smile tells a story.